Welcome back to the lab, folks. So today we're going to do uh, a combination of things. Uh, I've got this little package here, which came in from AliExpress. And boy, did this one take a long time to get here. But at least I was able to decide what it was. They're opening it up first. Yes. So this is just a uh, very, very cheap and inexpensive uh, PCB laid out as a strip board. It's just got these copper strips and it's single-sided which provides one of the benefits I'm looking for in using this and the way I, I work with this um, unlike a lot of people a lot of people will, will use a knife an exacto knife or something like that and try to cut the, the traces with the exacto knife and sometimes they'll cut uh, twice and then use the exacto knife to try and remove the copper yeah but I find that very it, it's it just takes a long time it's tedious and if you just use one cut, one single cut with an X-Acto knife, you leave such a small gap that it's, it's easy to have that shorted out, some, some physical contact and bend the copper back over or a stray little bit of solder somewhere can easily bridge that gap. So what I have is this, this pin vise here. And the pin vise, I've got two little uh, drill bits. And one of the drill bits is, is big enough that it's wider than the, the copper. So what I do, if I, let's say I wanted to put in a, a component and break that point there, I would just line up the drill with the, the hole at that point. And a couple of little twists later, I've gone and removed the, the copper. And it's a much, uh, a much quicker, simpler process than using a knife to do the same job. And what I use the small one for is that some components, let's say, you know, TO220 transistors or linear regulators or something of that size. I've got much bigger leads. They won't go through these holes. So I use that little one here to just make the holes bigger and I can get bigger devices in then. That's how I work with it. And the reason I use it um, is in a lot of cases, you want something that's, uh, it needs to be soldered. It's not going to work well in a soldered spread board. So something that's very, very sensitive to the connections and, and the voltage across the connections and is something that uh, it just can't be done properly in a solar spread board. This is ideal for it. And also something that's temporary, something that you want to take apart. So because it's single sided and you've got no plated through holes on it, uh, it's very, very easy to unsolder. So even just a little bit of copper braid can be used to completely unsolder the device or a simple solder sucker or something like that because you don't get the problem of solder getting stuck in the, in the uh, plated through holes. So it's, it's very good for temporary circuits. Now, what I'm gonna use this uh, for today is to show you this chip here. This is an AD584, and it's the, it's the L model, which is the one of the tighter specifications. And it was a fairly expensive chip. I think it was something like 18 or $20 or something like that. So. That's why I want to use it in this board here so I can safely remove it and put it into a circuit some other point in time after I do this little experiment. And because it is a voltage reference, it is a very high quality voltage reference. It doesn't like being stuck into boards or a solderless breadboard uh, where it might not get good contacts with supply voltage or, you know, when it's configured on the output between different pins and stuff like that. So it really should be soldered into place to be a reliable uh, voltage reference. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it into a piece of this and solder it up. So let's uh, let's go have a look at the uh, data sheet for this part and uh, we'll come right back then and, and solder this up and test it out. Okay so here is the device the AD584 pin programmable precision voltage reference. And it looks like we've got four programmable voltages, 10 volts, seven and a half, five, and two and a half. Ooh, laser driven to high accuracies. No external components required. Quiescent current of one milliamp, 10 milliamp current output capability. Well, military standard compliant versions available. Very nice. So ours is, uh, is the metal can style, TO99, rather than the P-DIP. I think uh, the L version is only available in this. As I found out when I was looking around, trying to find one. Now, I, I paid uh, only $18 for mine. I thought that was a lot at the time, but I did recently check over at DigiKey. 
even these ones here, the, the, the J and the K, I think the K is like $50 and it comes only in the plastic package. To get this model at DigiKey, you have to put in a special request for a quote. So I'm pretty sure the one that I got is either new old stock and the person who was selling it didn't really quite know what it was and how valuable it was or it's counterfeit because um, I would imagine these ones here are possibly in the hundreds of dollars if you're to get them off uh, somebody like DigiKey or one of the other reputable suppliers. But anyway, let's have a look at it here. So at 10 volts, we've got plus or minus 5 millivolts. At 7.5 volts, plus or minus 4 millivolts. 5 volts, plus or minus 3 millivolts. And 2.5 volts, plus or minus 2.5 millivolts. Obviously, you get the, the greatest accuracy as a, in terms of percentage um, from the 10 volts. 5 parts per million per degrees temperature. That's pretty amazing. So all these measurements here were, were taken at 15 volts. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to supply ours at 15 volts when I put it together so we can compare it directly with these results. I'm not going to test the uh, temperature stability at all. I just, uh, I'll take it on their word if it matches these. If it matches these, we've more than likely got something that um, is new old stock. If it doesn't match these, it's possibly just a counterfeit item. Turn on settling time, 200 microseconds. I'm not going to bother with all of that. This may be important for certain applications, but not for mine. Yeah, they give, uh, I wonder what the purpose of giving this here, this metallization photograph. That's pretty interesting that they include that. And then there's these type, the, the S series and T series, which seem to match the J series and K series as far as specifications are concerned. And uh, they're only available, the plastic package, or the metal package, I should say. Uh, these ones here are available either in the metal package, the H, or the plastic package, the N. So I'm not sure what these ones here are. They may make that clear somewhere in the document, but I can't find it. Anyway, let's go down here a little bit more. Okay, this is how you program it. It's pretty simple. So to get uh, 10 volts, you just leave it all open. Uh, get 7.5 7 volts, you join pins 2 and 3. You get 5 volts, you join pin 2 to pin 1. You get 2.5 volts, you join pin 3 to pin 1. That's what we're going to do. Now to go through down here through some uh, examples of how to make an adjustable output. Making it adjustable kind of uh, kind of take away some of the stability and some of the accuracy, wouldn't it? You'd have to use very, very, very fine quality potentiometers and resistors in order to, to maintain it. But anyway, schematic diagram. Performance over temperature, yeah, it's very stable. Now they do suggest putting on a, a small little capacitor here. It's not absolutely necessary between 0 0.01 or 10 nanofarad and 100 nanofarad to reduce the noise. We'll do that. And it's got a strobe terminal. Now if you bring the strobe low, the output goes low. I guess that could be used for some purposes. They go through some examples here, some applications. Very nice. I just want mine though, as I'm probably just going to build a, a, uh, a voltage reference for it for testing multimeters and stuff like that. All right, so let's head downstairs again and uh, build one of these up. Okay, we're back. I've got all the parts I need to get this done and I've uh, laid out my board and put all the cuts into the strips that I need in order to put this together properly. So let me take everything over to the soldering bench over there and I'll put it all together and I'll bring it back and show it to you. All right, we've got it uh, all put together here. Now, I should have laid this out a little bit more this way to give me room for these jumpers, but ah, this is okay, it's gonna work fine. So you can see uh, how quickly you can throw together some of these little quick prototypes, temporary prototypes on, on this uh, strip board. And it's so easy to get apart again to reserve the components. So I put this in lo rather long-legged here so I can Retain the length of the legs um, because I'm going to be using this someplace else. I had to you know, kind of bend it over a little bit to get access to that jumper there. So let me uh, hook up. I've got a power supply ready to go here. 
with 15 volts. So let me hook up that to this side here. And I've got a meter set up. Let me hook that up here. It's hopefully that'll balance out the weight of the other leads with these leads here. Okay, perfect. All right, not much to see going on here anyway, but I do have to get access into these uh, jumpers. So I've got it set up here for seven and a half volts out. I've got pin in, pins two and three connected together and we're getting the output here on pin one. Let me bring up the multimeter. Okay, we can see a 7.4978 volts. So that is 2.2 uh, millivolts out. And the specification said for seven and a half volts, it's supposed to be plus or minus four millivolts. So yeah, it's well within spec. And then of course we have the, the meter accuracy needs to be taken into account too. But since this is within the four millivolts stated for the device, I think we're pretty good. All right, let me change that. Um, I wonder if I can get in and get that myself. Take it off and we should be at 10 volts. And 10 volts is plus or minus five millivolts. And it looks like we're, again, we're off by 2.3 millivolts. Well, within specifications, good. Now, if I connect up uh, these two pins here, this one and this one, we should be getting is it five volts. I will setting here because it's connecting pin two up to pin one. That gives us five volts, so 5.0027. Five volts was supposed to be within three millivolts, and it is just 2.7 millivolts there. And connect it up to this one here. And this should be uh, 2.5 volts plus or minus 2.5 millivolts and it's off by 2.3 millivolts so we're in specifications there too nice device so this is the uh, ad 584l now i see it on the end of that number there i don't know if you can see it or not but uh it says there's a, a little h on the end of it and that just means it's the tin can version there's also, you can get it in a, a P-dip as well, but I, I like this version better. All right, folks, that's all I had for you today. I hope you got something out of it uh, using these, uh, these cheap little strip boards to do quick prototypes. And we learned about uh, precision voltage reference today, which just seemed to be fairly precise. I'm going to be using that in a project sometime in the future. I have one dangling around in my head. I don't know when I'll get to it, but uh, we're going to put that device into something. All right, folks. Thanks for coming out and joining me today. We'll catch you in the next video. In the meantime, you know, do, do some electronics.